It's been one hell of a ride. There was over a hundred locations, uh, so it was hectic. We did a lot of traveling. Move Levin Hotel and have 150 crew which had to travel, so it became a road trip. There's no location that's kind of cheated to be somewhere else. We've uh, kind of stuck to where the film needs to take us. Honestly, I don't think I've ever enjoyed um, working in an outdoor more than what I, you know, enjoyed in this film. I have done innumerable road trips and I always wanted to do a road movie and I was working with my co-writer Reema Karthi and I said I want to do something on the road. The first time Zoya spoke to me about this film was um, just after the release of Love by Chance. I wanted to set this film in Mexico, that's where it started. So I was kind of researching Mexico and we just started talking about what the idea would be. And uh, she just mentioned that she has this, uh, he, her and Reema, the co-writer, have uh, worked, on a, worked on a basic idea of uh, these three friends who get together to go on a, on a bachelor trip of sorts. And then we start putting down like a pointer, like a one-liner. Somehow the underlying part of it being about a story about three friends coming of age is what, you know, is was very attractive. It was something that of course as producers um, I was interested in, in wanting to know more about. That's how it started and before uh, we even started writing it had moved to Spain because the idea just required us to be in Spain. Kabira, I'm not going to Spain. Arjun, you're giving me a bachelor trip. Why are you doing this? It's my work. If you go, you'll go with me, but not. This was the fastest script I think we've written. It took us three months to write this film. It's very difficult to write a character to an actor because then you get you know, locked into that. When you're especially doing a really character-driven film, I think um, your casting is key. I think what Zoya and Reema managed to do is they wrote a beautiful characters which was not very difficult to cast. I love Ritik. I love his work. Whenever I hear a script, if I don't say yes or no in the first five minutes, then I end up not doing it. So again, with Zoya's film, it took me five minutes and I said, you know, Let's, let's do this. And then we went to Abhay. Abhay has a very unique sensibility. Abhay is also one of the few actors that you can just call and send a script to. My first feeling was a bit of fear, which was because I thought, what if I read the script and I don't like it? How am I going to tell her? Because I wouldn't be able to lie. And then when I read the script, I loved it. So I was even happy. And I was like, of course, I had loved it. I mean, it's Zoya. Why would you even think you wouldn't like what she would do? We always wanted Farhan. And they develop something and they're writing it. They come to us when they have a 20 page draft for feedback. So he's been involved, and she was from the beginning very clear that she wanted him in it. Farhan, where are you? Yeah? <laughs> One day she told me that the, the character of Imran is someone that I've uh, modeled on you. I really want you to, 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 to be this guy. Action! It's basically these three young men in their early 30s, they're all a working professional. Arjun, uh, that's played by Ritik, is somebody who works in London. He works in the financial district. Arjun comes from a, a world where we are following one pattern. You know, if money comes, the work goes, everything is safe. Listen, Joe, you've got to continue to give me bullshit fizzler that I'm going to have to pay my fry for a four fiesta. So he wants to do nothing but work and basically uh, build a bank balance where he can, after 40, start living his life. He starts the film in kind of a very tight silhouette where everything fits him like perfectly and you get a sense of his, his work and, and the strictness of his day-to-day -day life. And as things change and, and happen to him, you see his clothes getting sloppier, looser, and in a way, lovelier. This is a completely a departure from all the films that I have been doing. But I had to be honest with the film. I had to uh, have full faith in my director. And uh, Zoya just handled the whole thing so beautifully that I was completely comfortable. Kabir is, uh, I think, the most balanced of the three. This is what I told Zoya. I was like, I'm so glad you also gave me the character that I liked most. He's also very polite. He's also very politically correct. He really misses his friends. He wants to bring them back together. And uh, he's the one who plans this trip. It's the more lighter of the three, I think, personally. <laughs> Oh, my God! 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 O
he's got a slightly twisted side. I mean, he uh, he's a bit edgy. The conflict he has is really nice. Kabir actually, I have to admit, was was quite tricky to design because he has many facets of of the different characters. Good, yeah. I hope it's nice. Really Imran is a funky character. Imran is possibly from three, um, uh, the only character that as of now lives in the moment, which is I think thematically what the film's about. It really has been uh, quite a change for me from everything I've done. Um, all the characters, whether um, in Rock On or Lag Bachan or Kartik. Um, they're, they're very intense guys. He gets his attention being uh, not a clown but humorous. In this, I got really um, an opportunity to like really let my head down and explore the, the kind of comical side and the funny side of a performance. Imran, who obviously is, is my favorite character in terms of design, he's in. Um, a lot of linens, a lot of layers, uh, sl some slightly kooky things. He's the most stylish person in the film. Hey! What's your name? Leila. Friends, I'm going to call you a Leila is played by Katrina. She's, um, she's a very open person. I find her honest. She's very chilled, she's very natural, she's very strong in what she believes, but she goes about life very casually. Um, she's a very non-judgmental person. She's studying fashion, but uh, she is a diver. She's a professional diver and uh, because uh, she dives, she also takes three months off every year, goes to some dive site in the world and teaches diving. Up, down, okay, down, okay, down, okay, down, okay. Okay. They say that I will work till 40 and then I will retire. But she says that, how do you know that you will even reach 40? You know, your life is now, present, live now. She truly is actually the philosopher of the film, you know, and um, um, and for that reason, very influential on, on all characters. We made a very conscious effort in the film to take her away from um, and like a, like a sexy item girl kind of feel and really move her into more of a beach girl, an island girl. Action! Natasha is a very, very rich kid. She's an interior designer. She's been design working with her father. Now she's decided to get married and that's what her life's about. Can you see? Huh? It's our wedding card. Gorgeous, no? She's somebody who is extremely proper and well brought up and very classy. Yeah. She knows what she wants. She wants to renovate a house. She wants to do this. She wants to do that. She's very sorted. Yeah, of course. I like to not brush my hair when I get up in the morning and things. Whereas Natasha is very perfect, you know, like her hair is always perfectly curled and or perfectly straight and she has these high heels which look like apartments. And Natasha is a lot more aware of herself. She has the perfect sunglasses that go with the perfect bags, that go with the perfect shoes. It was good fun. It was a whole another world for me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't see anybody else, you know, cast to those characters. Right now after seeing them, you know, I just feel it's bang on. They're a trio, you know, they've grown up together, they've been through a lot, and they've vowed to be together forever. People who've known each other since school and have been thick as thieves pretty much since then. That's the beauty of this film, that uh, the relationships, the equations between the three is discovered through the sequence of the scenes. Ha oh, ha, oh, it's so funny, you know. <laughs> they've of course also um, had their share of problems as friends with each other, you know, some of which are still festering when they meet now. Stop it! Stop it, you two! Just stop! The whole film is a, a discovery. You know, it, it, it opens up. The, the, the layers keep coming off and you start realizing where they're coming from and where or what their problems are. Kind of soul-changing journey uh, for the three friends. And how then eventually they unite 
and uh, through each other, through all the individual experiences, through each other's experiences, how they uh, kind of get centered and understand what life is and understand how this should be lived. On any kind of road film, the locations become a character of the movie. She wrote very distinct things which are very, very true to, you know, Spain. The story took you to certain events that only happen in Spain. So Spain's a wonderful country. It's got um, a lot of colour. Sari locations were absolutely outstanding. I love Spain. I love the language, I love the culture, I love the country. So I got a chance to see all of it. Spanish people are mad. Really live each day to the fullest. <laughs> and they are extremely film friendly. <laughs> Did I speak any Spanish? No. Uh, poquito. A little bit. Very, 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 we understand each other very well. You already know uh, the director, and you, so you know, I knew what, what kind of shots she liked. Yeah. And it looked much better. Yeah? Yeah. I said, I guess the exciting thing about the project is to see how you execute a film like this. I went on a recce for a month and a half. We narrowed uh, locations down. My production designer, Suzanne, was genius. I think we did two trips for locations where we traveled all over Spain. We saw, you know, like a palette, like a look through the film. What we wanted, where do we want to take it? Now should we go up, should we go down? Where does it go from here to there? Because one needs, on a, on a road trip, one needs the variety. And then we mapped out our trip on the shoot through that. So I think a lot of effort went in and time in choosing because there's a lot of time where you need to travel. Again, it's a road film. Bunyol. Then Valencia. Valencia, then Ronda. It really was a road trip. We were actually driving from one place to the other. First of all, we went to Barcelona. Barcelona to Valencia. From Bar Barcelona to Valencia is 300 kilometers. This is uh, Bardenas, which is a natural park. Pembelona to Ronda. Ronda to Sevilla. 1,000 again, is 2,000. So we're shooting near Igualada, on top of the mountain. It was not that we took a flight and landed, and then we landed in the car. We were actually on the road while shooting the film. Yeah, I'll give you the two for that and the... पहली इस घंटे तो कोई किसी फिल्म में किसने ऐसे ट्रैवलिंग नहीं किया होगा जैसे ये हमने पूरा स्पेन स्पेन वाले भी इतने स्पेन नहीं घूमे होंगे जितने हम घूमे हैं। It was hot because it was the summer. पानी दे दो यार पानी दे दो। The amount of time we were on the road with that car and rigging and it's just very time consuming shooting a car. D27 is shoot. We're shooting first car scene which is on low loader. It's the first dialogue scene. Everyone's kind of confused why it sounds in the back of the boot. But the mixer with the recorder and the transmitter. The director and the rest of the crew are sitting right on top at the far end of the tracking vehicle and they can hear all the dialogues that we're recording right here. I think we had like 40 different shuttles on this film, which is really hard with 100 locations. The schedule for the for the fourth time. We are now going to be leading the tracking vehicle um, to make sure there's no dangers or anything in front. You know, sometimes you really miss the wild, wild east, I have to say. The first world has too many rules. Once you shoot on the highways there, 
you can't just suddenly cut and then decide to take a U turn and do that. Could only turn after like five kilometers and come back. We had to use both journeys to shoot, and so the light would change completely. And I mean, of course, it's great, and they have laws, and they must be respected. But you know, we also sometimes you just want to just be like, oh God, do we have to drive for 40 minutes? Can't we just turn from here and stop the crowd, which you're so used to doing in India? But then the same thing became exciting. Actually, we had a very, uh, we had a bit of our own, um, very special song. We would sing to encourage ourselves. It is a lovely weather, and we are all together. There is no sun today. There is no rain today. It is a lovely weather. And then we'd get like do some beatboxing or something. It was good fun. Seven, pick up. Action. Joe, yeah, I spoke with Mr. Yamamoto and uh, the docket needs to reach him in two days. The deadline oh, yaar, is in two days. Please, so please, go his phone bar pick The evaluation is done, right? Are you mad? Tune iska. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. You know, and everyone had fun. <laughs> I learned, I learned, and I actually trained to ride the bike, and I fell off at one point as well. I'm very happy that I've learned how to ride a bike so now I can ride almost any bike. I really enjoyed it. There's a great freedom in learning how to ride a bike and just zipping down the road on a motorcycle. I pull myself in. Oh, sorry, sorry, I keep doing that. Yeah, the instinct goes to rule, actually. You're, right. you're holding the car, look at it, it's fab. They made a pact in college that every time he will choose his own adventure sport. And he will have to participate in the rest of the other two. Let's go. Let's go. Zoya has very successfully managed to do is she's managed to capture the basic essence of what these sports do to you. They're there to sort of put the characters in a dangerous situation and have them come through. That's like life. I mean, we are put in uh, positions where our life is at risk, but we come through anyway. I've never experienced so much silence in my life. I'm going down at the speed of some amazing number of miles per hour. But for me, I was just... Looking at the sun, the sun was there. The earth was down there and look back, it's like nothing. I'm just falling. It was the best experience of my whole life. <laughs> Things like this can't be done just on a whim. You know, I mean, oh, it looks cool, so let me do it. You have to prepare yourself. You have to train. Control the One side. We did some training for a week. One inspector outside. 
We did about two days of theory work and tests and stuff like that. Because it's hair, it's dangerous. If parachute, open it, if you pull the wrong string. Exciting, just the, the whole hangar, the base was interesting. The town roses where we did it was interesting. It's just like a town where that's what people do. They jump out of planes or they go diving. It's a small plane. And they open a door which is massive. So it's like half the plane is open. And you're going like this. I, I mean, I was just a bit creeped out. I just kept staring at the monitor because I thought I'd be sick. Jumping at 5,000, which I do win. If it's okay, we continue to climb. As any normal person would be scared of jumping off a plane, yes, I was scared of jumping off a plane. Okay. Very afraid of heights. I don't even wear heels. Fear is only at that time when you are standing on the edge of the plane and you are deciding whether do I jump or not, jump or not. Fear is only until then. Once you have jumped, then you are just instincts. Farhan loves jumping off the plane. I just want to get out of here. I want to go to the plane. I had fortunately done my skydiving course in 2007. Looking forward to it. It'll be lots of fun. I haven't done it now for a while, but... Uh, so I, I was capable enough of doing it by myself. He made very, very good jumps. Nothing special to fix about this position, the altitude awareness, and, and uh, I think he's going to be a very, very good skydiver. Then. I think on skydiving, Farhan had been, because he skydives, so they got a lot of help from him in terms of input about writing the skydiving sequence. I keep telling Farhan that uh, I only hire you so that you can shoot the skydiving. And I did as many dives as I possibly could. I hope to go back there again very soon and do even. One of the other big reasons to do this film was, yeah, so I can skydive. It's another feeling. I mean, I found that really exciting. Come to the